how have I gotten the oil markets so right? Now, I'm not any smarter than these analysts, but it's no different than a doctor that's been practicing medicine his whole life. He gives medicine to the sick and they get better. And it's no different than bringing a nutrition Bible to him and saying, hey, nutrition works too. They're, they're, they're so indoctrinated by medicine. They went to school for 10 years and they've been practicing medicine for 30 years. They have a practice. They make millions of dollars. How are you going to get them to agree with you? It goes against everything in them. And so oil and gas analysts, they are such information nerds. They study everything. They look at everything. And in their pride, they say, well, fundamentally speaking, this is what's going to happen. And then the wild card. Nobody expected COVID to destroy demand by 10 million barrels a day. Nobody expected Saudi Arabia and Russia to flood the market with oil to purposely break the backs of shale. Nobody foresaw Saudi Arabia and Russia forming an alliance called OPEC Plus, along with all the other countries to agree to the largest oil and gas production cut this world has ever seen, 10 million barrels a day, causing oil to climb back to 100 something dollars a barrel. Everybody was saying we would not see $100 oil, but why was I able to see it? They assumed, oh, well, Biden's in place. They're going to push the green initiative game over for oil and gas. COVID is destroying oil and gas demand. There are many, many respected analysts, analysts that I have followed for years, geologists that I respected their intuition, their wisdom, their knowledge of the oil and gas industry as they are older than I am, and they've been in it for much longer, said we will never see $100 oil ever again. And I was sitting there and I said, man, how can somebody have it so wrong? I mean, nobody foresaw Russia going in, dropping bombs in Ukraine, causing oil prices to go to $100 a barrel overnight. So I have a prediction, guys. The decoupling of the relationship with Saudi Arabia guarantees indefinitely oil prices to stay above $85 a barrel. Maybe we'll have a moment where the economies crash and oil, man, oil demand drops, and we might see a, a short period of 70, 60, 70 dollar oil, but OPEC will simply just curb it. I bet the Biden administration is so furious because they worked so hard to prepare for the elections in November. They did every, they pulled out every stop to use every resource necessary to bring energy prices down releasing the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, monetary policy uh, controls with the federal rate hikes and many other things, the, the false uh, uh, flag that we're in a recession. The, all of the media, was, everybody was saying we're in a recession. We kept, they, they kept touting the whole green energy buzz. We don't need fossil fuels. It caused massive market sell-offs, very low volume oil trading. I mean, everything came against oil. And Joe did whatever it took and a simple flip of the switch in the Middle East caused oil prices to go back in, in destroying all the efforts of the left to lower those prices. It must have just pissed Joe off. Here's the deal. During the 80s, 90s, early 2000, demand wasn't anywhere near of what it is today. And during those times, it was very hard to control oil. And it got even more difficult during the days of the Shell Revolution, we were producing so much oil and gas that OPEC wouldn't make any sense for them to reduce two to three million barrels a day. Why? Because Shell would just drill even more oil, making it even more profitable, causing them to get even more money, causing them to even drill even more, and it would have never ended. And so OPEC played it smart. They, they kept production steady in full supply, and then at the right time, they flooded the markets with oil, breaking the backs of shale oil and gas during the days of COVID. And now, now they have the ability to control oil because shale oil, American oil and gas is out of the game. And the right, I'm a Republican for the most part. I don't agree with everything the Republicans say, especially when it comes to energy. I mean, during the times, days of Trump, I was like, Trump, you're wrong about shale and here we are. The thing you need to understand, because I, I keep hearing the right talking about how all the energy we need is right below our feet. That may be true. 
we might have enough oil and gas to last us for the next 50 years. That is possible. But what is impossible is to produce that oil and gas economically feasible. Shale oil is the most expensive barrel of oil to produce. Uh, there, I, I wanted to have it for this video, but I forgot to, to find it. But anyways, there's a research company that did a research study on uh, uh, in 2019. I'm, in fact, I'm going to put the link in the description below. But they did a study on 34 oil and gas shell companies. And every one of them came up short. Every one of them spent more money on the cost to develop oil than what they invested, uh, than, 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 than what was produced. They, they spent more money per barrel than what they sold it for. So the problem with shale is that it is abundant and it's right below our feet. But if it cost a million dollars to extract $800,000 worth of oil, I mean, it's good for the common man but it's not good for the investor. And if it's not good for the banks or the investors, they're not getting involved. Now I'm talking shale. I'm in, I'm in conventional oil where it, it's very much economically feasible. But we're not talking about that because I've had a few people ask me, well, Sean, you're really negative against oil. I'm negative against shale oil. There's a difference, okay? And so the right needs to stop touting the fact, well, it's a talking point and it rallies their base. Just like Biden's base gets rallied by locking up the, the oil and gas companies and pushing the, the green and, and, uh, agenda, okay? So the left is rallying their base and the right is rallying their base and energy is caught in between. So Saudi Arabia cuts off the very hand that feeds them by siding with OPEC, with Russia, coming together against the West. Now, Saudi Arabia uh, was on CNN. You can look up uh, uh, that interview. And he was simply staying to his talking points. This was not personal. This was not political. This was a 100% economical, 100%. Now, I believe the Middle East, when it comes to oil and gas, more than, than, than the West. The West is pushing this green energy. The West is pushing that demand is dropping. The West is pushing that fossil fuels is destroying the world. Look. It doesn't make any sense to spend billions and billions of dollars worth of weapons over to the Middle East so, so they could bomb people in Yemen and then buy their oil when they are, if you really believe in, in, in global warming, if you really believe that oil is destroying the world, then stop buying Saudi's oil. It doesn't make any sense to reduce shale oil output by two, three million barrels a day and increase the imports by two to three million barrels of oil a day. Isn't that called hypocrisy? What difference does it make if we're buying the oil then burning it here versus just producing it here? Here, I mean, at least at least we're not putting money in the hands of tyrants. At least we're putting money in uh, American pockets so they could provide for their family and growing our economy. This is all hypocrisy. It's all political. It's all political. It's all political. So the left could say, "Look what we're doing to reduce oil." demand. We are, they're, they're, they're fulfilling campaign promises. They shut down that massive oil and gas lease in Alaska. They shut down the Keystone pipeline. There's many, many federal lands that aren't getting uh, uh, able to produce because of the, uh, because of the controls of the left. And their argument is, you know, they, well, they have like 9,000 leases. How come they're not developing on those? Look, oil and gas companies sit on leases all the time. There's many leases that are not profitable. There's many leases that they don't have the funding for. There's many leases that don't have the time to get to. And then the right, their argument is, well, Joe Biden is shutting down the Keystone Pipeline and, and he's shutting down the oil and gas industry. Look, what shut down the oil and gas industry is not being profitable. Shell had their shot. If Shell was profitable, if people were making three, four, five times their money back, we would keep doing it. I mean, these massive oil and gas companies, Chevron, British Petroleum, Texaco, these massive oil companies are not controlled by the government. They're controlled by financing. If I had a trillion dollars today and I went to Chevron, British Petroleum, and, say, and, and told these guys, hey, look, guys, I want to spend a trillion dollars in oil and gas. Oh, no, 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 no. We, we, we can't drill any more oil, buddy. Sorry, we're not going to drill. Oh, uh, Joe told me not to drill. Look, there's no laws in place that prevent the oil and gas companies from developing. There, there, there's nothing. I mean, I'm a, small, I'm a small fry in a massive swimming pool, and we're able to develop in New York. Go figure. 
How are we able to do that? But Chevron, with billions and billions of dollars, can't develop in America? That's all hearsay, guys. Oil and gas have the freedom. Maybe in the Gulf, it's more difficult to get a permit to develop. Maybe on federal lands, maybe in Alaska. I mean, there, there, there are things you could point at in Alaska, like, hey, that they shut that down. Joe has not done enough, legally speaking, to shut down oil and gas. But it's all the rhetoric that shut down oil and gas. If you want a talking point, and, and see, the thing is, we can't just point at this. The media parakeets everything the agenda speaks. The agenda is to get us off foreign oil, get us off oil altogether, because that rallies the base. So it comes down, if, if, if it causes the base to get rallied behind Joe, that's what they're going to talk about. Oh, green energy is a, is, is a hot button. Climate change is a hot button. Putting fossil fuels on notice and potential imprisonment is a hot button. They like to hear that stuff. They love Tesla. They love the idea of green. They turn a blind eye to the fact that their batteries come from a mine in Africa owned by China, which is being mined by children that are underpaid. They turn a blind eye to the fact that the energy that is charging the very batteries that are running their electric cars is predominantly fossil fuels. They turn a blind eye to it. They turn a blind eye to the fact that there's just not enough electricity to charge these vehicles. And the infrastructure it takes to develop doesn't exist. The, 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 the time it's going to take, it's gonna, it, it, we're going to be like Sri Lanka and we're going we're, 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 we're to end in our demise. I'm telling you right now, the decoupling with Saudi Arabia, I, in, in, when, when, when Joe Biden was coming to office and oil prices were very low, I said, mark my words, a Joe Biden administration is going to cause triple digit oil. Mark my words. Mark my words. This decoupling of Saudi Arabia, we're going to see oil prices at highs this world has never seen. And if, if, if China and Russia and Saudi Arabia, I, if you look at my past few videos, several videos ago, I was saying, get ready for infrastructure to be attacked and get ready for the plan to start cutting off the West from oil. And all of a sudden, what happened? Nord Stream 1 and 2 get blown up. OPEC Plus sides against the West and cuts oil. If this continues, see right now we have what's called West Texas Intermediate, okay? If I produce a barrel of oil in the U.S. and I sell it to a U.S. refinery, I'm going to get, it's going to be priced in WTI. Now Brent crude is an export price if I sell it to another country. If I export a million barrels of oil over to uh, Europe, they're not going to pay me WTI, they're going to pay me Brent or whatever we agree upon, but Brent is the common denominator there. So here's what I'm saying. The decoupling from OPEC, which is what we're doing by, Biden has to spew negative rhetoric, anti-rhetoric against Saudi Arabia. He has to, because otherwise his base is gonna be not going to vote for him. So they're making it very clear. Listen, guys, we are going to act because Saudi Arabia sided with Russia, we're going to act. And the news keeps recycling the same, same thing over and over again. Or are you going to cut them off from wep weaponry arms? What are you going to do? How are you going to sanction them? What are you going to do? And, and Joe's response is, we're going to, it's going to happen. We're going to uh, deal with this blow because he's rallying his base. Now he has to do something. He promised them, hey, we're going to shut down oil and gas. And he did. He has to do something about it. So he's going to do something to destroy and sever that relationship. The decoupling of OPEC, of Saudi Arabia, away from the West, away from America, is going to cause local oil prices to go up. Because right now, local oil prices are low because we have, we have, we, we, we're able to print money. This is what keeps oil prices low, guys. We're the only country that could just print money in it not having much bearing on the value of that dollar. I mean, we're printing trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars, and the dollar bill is still powerful. And so the reason why we could do that is because most of people's, uh, other countries' currencies and a lot of commodities are pegged against the U.S. dollar. So we've been able to print money and trade it for barrels of oil. We literally have free energy. We've had this free energy relationship for years and that's why our country grew at such a substantial rate. That's why we're the richest country in the world is because we had the free energy. Well, that relationship 
will end in the decoupling of the relationship with Saudi Arabia. Not only will that make oil more expensive because of the petrodollar, and they call it the petrodollar because all oil is sold in the US dollar, but the decoupling will cause Saudi Arabia, China, I mean, they're already planning this. If you look up the SEO or BRICS, they have already planned all of this to use their own currency to enter trade. Russia is selling oil to China using Chinese currency, the yen. India is doing the same thing. Saudi Arabia follows because of this decoupling. They're not going to, they're not going to, Saudi Arabia, they're all about profits. They're all about capital. And if uh, America wants to cut off the hand that feeds them, they'll go to Russia or they'll go to France to get their weapon. Why do you think Saudi Arabia, the Saudi crown prince, sat down with Macron, the, 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 the French president? You think they're just hanging out, having some tea? Or are they talking about what happens if me, if, if America and Saudi Arabia disconnect. This is why Saudi Arabia is so keen to getting involved with China. And we all, we all know why Russia did it. And so here's the thing. They could decouple, Saudi Arabia could afford to decouple from America. I mean, they're only selling America like a half million barrels a day. Their, 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 their biggest buyers are not America. Nowhere near that. And so they could, they, the, what, what they'd be losing with America is protection. But they could get all the military weapons they need from Russia and from France. And Russia has more influence on Iran than America ever did. And Iran is the reason why they're going to war in Yemen. So Saudi Arabia probably has it in his mind, you know what, screw the West. They're going to attack me publicly and say that we're just this evil country. They're going to demonize us, demonize fossil fuels. Screw them. I'm siding with Russia. At least Russia respects oil. I mean, it was Russia that partnered with us to get us out of the oil glut, break the backs of shale, and get us back into triple-digit oil. That was because of Russia. America, if it was up to America, they would keep oil prices around $30 a barrel and turn a blind eye to suffering American oil and gas workers because they don't care. Hey, get with the new. Hey, just go to school. Go, go to school and learn how to fix a Tesla. Just walk away from your... Your, your God-given right to drill American oil and gas to supply tomorrow's future energy need and go green because that's it. We're done. Like, we're done with you, you know? And so here's the deal. OPEC sees what is coming, and what is coming is not pretty. We're not going to We're not, the world is not developing enough oil and gas for, for tomorrow's energy needs. And OPEC is doing nothing about it because they want us to pay the price. They're okay with oil prices being $120 a barrel. When, it's, when, it, when, when oil is the massive part of your GDP, and you're going to be making massive amounts of money. And so if, if the West, if, if OPEC cuts off the West from energy, from the ability to import oil, WTI prices are going to skyrocket. And we're going to have to, we're going to, have to eat what we kill. We can't rely on Saudi oil. I mean, they've, they, they've, in the past, in the 70s, when they did the oil embargo, there was all these lines to buy gasoline, oil prices skyrocketed. I could foresee that happening again. And WTI, while the world is paying $80, $90, $100 a barrel, the U.S. will be paying $150 because we just don't have enough crude, and especially heavy crude. We don't have enough. We need to call on Canada to produce more oil. We need Canadian oil like we've never needed Canadian before. They're in our backyard and the Keystone Pipeline could have really helped us with that. I mean, if I was president today, I would do whatever it takes to build a pipeline that could send us three to five million barrels a day because we're going to need it like you never believed. I would give massive subsidies and I would write massive checks to the Shell oil and gas companies. How, what is it going to take to get us back to 13, 14, 15 million barrels a day. What is that going to take? Whatever it takes. I had this thought, you know, why not, instead of giving our money to the IRS, why not having the IRS send that money to the Shell Oil and Gas, and then they take the profits from oil and gas to pay for their governing expenses. And then America's economy will thrive, reducing inflation, reducing the cost of living. And all the while, we're building green technology because we need both, guys. Look, there's not enough oil to power the world forever. 
If we kept growing, oil demand would be 200 million barrels a day. I mean, America is, only, is the only country in the world that have, have come close to their peak for oil demand. Plastic usage is increasing. Oil demand is increasing. India's oil demand has been so insignificant. And they have billions of people. China, all of these other countries, they're starting to grow. Man, if you, if you pulled out all the stops, oil demand would be 130 million barrel a day demand. So what am I saying, guys? Bottom line, Joe Biden has no choice but to rally his base by getting hard, getting tough on Saudi Arabia. They, they, they have tormented Trump and his base by saying that we're friends with Russia because we weren't tough on Russia. We wouldn't publicly uh, say that Russia and Putin is an evil, evil man. It's an evil, evil country. Joe's not going to make that mistake. Although I don't think it was a mistake because we're, now we're in a potentially we could be nuked because of Biden's rhetoric, because he, he, he is more afraid of his base or of not staying in power. And so they're going to get tough on Saudi Arabia. They're going to teach him a lesson at the, de, at, at, at the demise of the most important relationship America will ever have. All right, guys, I'm Sean Pruitt, president of Kingdom Exploration. Uh, give, me your, uh, give me your thoughts on this. Give me, where do you think uh, oil's going? If you have amazing uh, oil and gas articles or videos or whatever, send it my way. Uh, I'd love to, to read them. Uh, I get emails from a lot of people looking at, uh, and I look at a lot of oil and gas deals. If you have an incredible lease, send it to me. Um, we're currently developing uh, a conventional oil and gas uh, wells in uh, uh, New York. Uh, and if you have any great oil and gas deals, uh, or if you're interested in, in learning more about oil and gas, go to my description below, fill out the form. Love to chat with you and, and tell me what uh, uh, you want to chat about. All right, guys, uh, we'll talk soon. Thanks.